air infiltration and exfiltration can account for about 10 to 30 percent of all the heating and cooling energy that we use in homes. And one of the best ways to control air infiltration is to have a good exterior air barrier system. That means sealing the building penetration so that air doesn't infiltrate in and push out all the air that you pay to heat and cool. Well, another critical component to getting an air barrier right is to make sure that that air barrier integrates well with the rest of the building components, in particular window flashing. A lot of the callbacks that we have today in homes is due to water and moisture problems and leaks around windows. So let's go meet Carl Hegstrom, who's going to show us how to flash windows and how to detail our air barrier system and integrate that with our flashing. In many western states, it's not uncommon for builders to install the windows before the house wrap. This is particularly true in stucco markets. Two trades install the weather barrier. A window crew will install the windows and the window flashing, and the lathers will install the house wrap. In this segment, we're going to walk through the steps required to integrate windows, window flashing, and house wrap. This is usually done by separate trades, but keep in mind, builders need to understand the entire process so they can coordinate each trade. Let's go install a window. The first step is to install a one foot wide apron piece at the bottom of the rough opening. This apron piece will ensure that the flashing details for the window overlap the house wrap properly and don't get reverse shingled beneath the window. When available, it's a good idea to use home wrap. The smooth surface of home wrap will make life easier for the window installer. The apron should extend at least 10 inches past the jams of the window or to the first stud beyond the king stud. Use cap nails to securely fasten the top four inches of the apron below the rough sill. The apron must be securely fastened so that flex wrap won't pull the apron up at the corners as it tries to adhere to the face of it. Secure the top third of the apron and allow the bottom two thirds to drape freely. This allows the lather to come through later and tuck the house wrap underneath so you get the proper shingling details. Flex wrap is a self healing flexible membrane that can be used to form a one piece sill. The butyl based adhesive on the flex wrap is easier to work with than the generic peel and stick, and it's available in 7 inch and 9 inch width rolls. The material can be rolled out on the sill and flexed to form a one-piece corner. When installing the flex wrap sill, I like to run the sides up the jams a minimum of six inches, and I rub the material in tight to the rough sill and the jams so that the adhesive gets a real good grab. I also like to apply additional pressure by using a J-roller. This allows me to really force the adhesive in contact with the rough sill and the jams. When using a generic peel and stick to form sill pans, the only way to form a corner is to cut the corners and then patch in a piece. But this always leaves an open corner. This is where it's important to make sure that the apron was fastened securely. As I spread the flex wrap out and it grabs hold of the apron, it has a tendency to want to pull it back and the cap nail that I placed in the apron will prevent that from happening. After spreading the flex wrap out, I'll pop a cap nail right along the edge to also prevent it from curling back. The beetle based adhesive and flex wrap takes 24 hours to get its full grab and it's also self healing and seals around any fasteners that are driven through it later. With the one piece sill now in place it's time to install the window. It's important to follow the window manufacturers instructions. In this case we're going to caulk the window in place. And when we caulk the window in place, we only apply caulk to the jams and to the window head. We leave the bottom sill uncaulked. Now it's time to install the window. Now that the window's been installed, the next step is to apply straight flash to the jams and the window head. I start installing the jam flashing at the top of the window, letting the straight flash extend beyond the window head a couple inches, and then I'll peel off the release paper as I work my way down the window to the window sill. It's important that the straight flash extend at least to the bottom of the sill, if not a little bit beyond. You'll note as I install the jam flashing and the head flashing that the material adheres directly to the sheathing. It's always a good idea to follow up with the J roller to apply 
even pressure all over the surface of the head and the jam flashing. With the jam flashing in place, now it's time to put the head flashing on. The head flashing should extend beyond the jam flashing at both edges. It's important that the jam flashing doesn't extend beyond the head flashing that follows on top of the window. The lather goes around the first floor of the house and installs the apron pieces all at once. The first course that the lather will apply is a five foot roll of stucco wrap around the base of the house. This wrap should overlap the weep channel and as he reaches the windows he'll cut the roll off picking up again on the other side of the window until he's wrapped the entire first course of the house. Running the roll to the edge of the window will ensure that it overlaps the underlying apron at least 12 inches. Remember keep the roll plumb when you start to roll out the stucco wrap Otherwise, it'll start to run uphill or downhill, depending which way it's tilting. In this case, we had an air conditioning penetration with a flashing hood. Prior to installing the stucker wrap, I tucked the flap underneath the flashing hood, and then as I rolled the stucco wrap over top of the flashing hood, I came back and carefully cut a slit and cut around the contour of the flashing hood and then taped the stucco wrap directly to the flashing hood to prevent any moisture from finding its way behind the stucco wrap. On the other side of the window, there were two plumbing rough-in penetrations. In these cases, I like to cut a small X just large enough to allow the stucco wrap to slip over the plumbing penetration. Continuing the shingling details for the weather barrier, the next step is to roll out the second course of stucco wrap. The lather may roll this second course out directly over the windows. Rolling the second course directly over the window will create fewer seams and fewer chances for leaks. But if there's only a small piece above the window head, you may stop short at the window jam, cut the roll, and pick up again on the other side of the window, continuing with the second course, and come back later to patch in the small window head piece. But however it's done, it's important that every piece is properly lapped and no piece is left out of the system. The stucco wrap should be taped tightly at all window jams and at the window head. All overlaps should be taped carefully. When taping the stucco wrap at window jams, be sure to extend the tape all the way down to the bottom of the roll. If we were going to put horizontal siding on this house, this weather barrier is complete. But if we're going to put stucco on, we need to apply a second intervening layer. That intervening layer can be rigid foam, black paper, or another layer of home wrap, depending on the stucco system you plan to use. Now we've just shown you how many of the builders in the western states apply their weather barrier by putting the windows in first, followed by the home wrap. No matter which method you use, it's important to follow the details and make sure that all the layers overlap the preceding layers so that it sheds water down the system and prevents moisture from entering into the wall system.